So I'm Matthew Royal, and like my friend Jazeel, ours is a story that could have only been made possible by the sorts of social investment that you have made in our lives. My story begins at 18 Blake Road, community not very far from here, a stone's throw away from St. George's College. My father operated a shop in the community, and after a series of successful robberies and a series of unsuccessful attempts on his life, operating that business became both unprofitable and unsafe. So the primary means of income for my family was shut down. While that business was earning money, my father was able to push every single cent he had into the education of his three children. So my brother and sister, though living in a city community, went to Wilma's Prep. By the time I was to go to primary education, though, shop locked. <laughs> so I had, had, and I do mean this, the privilege of going to Clancarthy Primary. But it's not lost on us the disparity in circumstances that my, my siblings would have had and I would have had. But I had a wonderful time at Clancarthy. And to my great privilege, matriculated to the Woolmouth Boys' School. <laughs> and I remember the year was 2006. We were at church. Mommy was sharing with another lady at church the difficulties it would mean me going into high school. More books, more fees, no more money. And this parent at church mentioned to Mommy that there is a thing called the Grace and Staff Community Development Foundation. We took the walk down to Harbour Street, where the foundation was housed at the time, met the staff there. Little did I know that I would have just begun a relationship that lasted over 10 years. And broadly, what I'd like to draw your attention to is this idea of social investment, and specifically, as it relates to the mandate of the Grace and Staff Foundation, the idea of community development. Grace and Staff helped me finance in my education from first form at Wilmers to final year Norman Manley Law School. <laughs> but when I think of the Grace and Staff Foundation, the monetary contribution isn't the thing that stands out most in my mind. I remember being involved in First, the photography club. And remember, we're speaking about the power of social investment. In the photography club, community members from Central Kingston, from Trenchtown, from Spanish Town, were taken out of the precincts of their familiar environment and brought into different communities, exposed to celebrated photographer Hod Muyong, and were taught a simple skill. If you looked at us, we were just taking a camera, pointing and shooting. But we were being exposed to a different level of living. We are being exposed to more than our community's cultures allowed us to be exposed to. Our horizons were expanding, and we began to see more of ourselves. Grace also hosted several talks with us. So we'd be called into the Institute of Jamaica and we'd have CEOs of companies come to speak to us. And I remember very well a chartered accountant, I believe his name was Bruce Scott, is Bruce Scott. And he said to us, he, when he was young, wrote down his name and all the qualifications he wanted to have behind it. And when he said that, I took out a piece of paper, I wrote down my name, Matthew Anthony Royal, LLB Aunt. And just a few years after that, I achieved it. The power of social investment is that Grace Kennedy gave us an example of the people who we could be, gave us a benchmark that we could strive towards, and also gave us the means to achieve those objectives. Grace not only invested in those means, but Grace and staff also provided a family to many people whose natural families would not have had the sort of example that they would have needed to progress in the way they have. 
So if you've ever had the privilege of meeting Ms. Frances Madden, or the great privilege of meeting Mr. Curtis Sweeney, you'd understand exactly what I'm speaking about. And Mr. Sweeney could tell you that he would invite us in his office and we'd be sitting there literally for hours, talking about our futures, giving advice on our plans, what we could study in school, that sort of influence which in many homes would have been absent became the inspiration for many people to achieve far beyond their wildest imaginations for themselves. So my hope today is to remind you of what you have done and hopefully to be an example of why you have done it and to encourage you to continue to do it because the Grace and Star Community Development Foundation took seriously its mandate and one individual at a time, one school fee at a time, one circumstance at a time, one home at a time is developing the communities of Jamaica and we're all better off for it. Thank you very much. <laughs>